Hey guys, I'm going to show you guys how to do one of the most popular things that FX Home or Vision Lab is created for, which is lightsaber effects, clashes, and that kind of stuff. Alright, now this wasn't always like this. This was sideways, and I want to fix that because I recorded it with my iPhone, which made it sideways. So you want to select the image, open it. And see how this is width 480, height 360. You want to change this to 360 and 480. Okay. And it should fix right now. Hannah, done! Sorry, that was my dog. And it's my dog again. Alright, shut up. Okay, now you see how this was the original size of the thing, it just flipped the canvas. Alright, now what you want to do is go to scale and take this little ball thing, try and make it as much to for, uh, 180 degrees as possible, or you can manu manually do it by these, which is what I'm going to do after I got it as close as possible. And this is just for the iPhone users, or if you accidentally recorded sideways. So, it's not that hard. You just flip the widths and the heights at, from the beginning, pretty much. And then scale. Alright, now this is good. Alright. I filmed this in front of a green screen, and I'm probably going to use this for my green screen video with Vision Lab. So, once I add in all the neon lights and lightsaber, I'll show you how to do green green screen. Now, to do neon light, you simply drag this over, click four point, and now four point just appeared right here. Now, click four point, and then just click four points. <laughs> Obviously, from the name. And you can see it instantaneously just made a lightsaber now that's not a very good looking one and let's fix that so you want to make it as close to your prop as possible and this is even the hard way of doing it but I'm doing this to make it set for the whole film that you make it with now you want to take hilt make it personal preference try and round it out but mine is about there, you can see it. And then tip curve, make it kind of pointy. But if you're going to be moving around a lot and you have a lot of motion blur, don't put it to like this. Put it to like this. Or it's just going to look so round that it looks fake. But mine doesn't have very much motion blur, so I'm going to put it at that. Now you want to make feather 2 to feather out the white and the red part. And to change the neon glow, you see that, you go to color. If you just want to do a, a crappy looking lightsaber, like, oh, hey, I just bought a program, and um, I think I'm just going to do a crappy video. Well, no, this is how you make a good one. That's crappy. Make as bright as you can. Whatever color you want, also. Make a second one, just click on the line, click this. Click the color again, make it darker, just to give it some lighting effect, which makes it look professional. And bring this out more to make it bright. Okay. And you can see how, well, since it's, uh, ab um, excuse me, it's in front of green, it, you can't really see it, but when it's finished, it looks pretty good. Now, you want to change size, about 26 and spread you know really not even 26 you gotta play around with how close the prop is to the screen of the camera just to scale it out and stuff now I'm gonna make it kinda big here just cause it looks pretty cool spread kinda just kinda spreads out the blue color like if you don't use any it just looks like paint like the program but yeah just kinda smudges it makes it look better I think I'm going to make this a little brighter. 
But again, this is all personal preference. You don't have to do it exactly like it. How did that get changed? That kind of blurs right here. Not too much, though. Alright. Now, to go to the next frame, just click four point. And that's how it is for this frame. It goes by frame by frame. People I've seen on YouTube videos to say every other frame, no. Because, well, this part of the video, I didn't move much, so it's not gonna, like, move, like, back and forth, back and forth when I go like this. By the way, this is how you change frames. And, but you always do each frame. And, yeah, it takes a long time, but the end result is amazing if you do it right. And I'm gonna teach you how. Now, these little gray squares are render, like, the image right here. It renders it, it saves it. If you don't, if you just keep clicking this, which I'm not because it messes it up, um, and take these blocks away, then if you put a lightsaber like position here and skip all the way to here, and the lightsaber's like pointed this way, throughout here, it's gonna move like looks so dumb it won't even make sense but I had that problem for years and I figured it out so I figured I'd tell you guys ahead of time now for the next frame just see how it moved you can drag it and readjust it and now to do this the easy way you wanna click neon glow this green dot click the red button see now you can see through it and it doesn't affect the glow once you turn it back on at the end of your video once you're all done it'll turn back on and you can do whatever you want but now it filled these in because you changed something by turning off the glow not by moving this but by turning off the glow you have more render things just go back through it but see I skipped one and then it scoots over and then it's there scoots over there Alright, I'm going to turn the glow back on just to show you the next thing. And you, Yeah, you just do this all the way through till you're done. Just match it up with your prop. Now turn it on when you're done. Click off. Now to do lightsaber clashes, I have an older version of Effects Lab right now, so I'm not sure it's even going to be on here. Let's hope it is. Doesn't look like it. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, here it is. Battlestar Jump. It's not labeled like Lightsaber Clash or anything, but it's Battlestar Jump. Now you want to do, now you want to click Optic Movement, and here's where it starts. And when, say you draw a second lightsaber here, I'll show you how in a second. Just drag that there, and throughout the frames, it'll get bigger. Now that moved because I didn't set it where I wanted it to be. But I'm going to go back here. So I'm going to take that, or I'm just going to put that there. And you can change the size right up here, make it bigger, and then click next frame. Put it back where you see the intercepts of the lightsaber. Make it bigger to make it look like it's flickering. Just make it look more professional, you know? And now, all you got to do to draw, make a second lightsaber is drag another neon light on, four point same drill over again now with a second lightsaber it only means your video is going to be twice as long and well that's just time it takes but anyway yeah that's how you do uh, everything and effect duration for this battle star thing you wanted to it was it would originally be here for you but i've had it at a hundred and that will drag this out way out here so the effect will last all the way down here where you see this pink or you can change the color by doing this or apply color or something like that see how this is all stretched out this is where that effect will be when the frame is right here the lightsaber effect will no longer be there and the same here when it's right here the clash will be gone but it, the preset is so short because normally you're not clashing for a super long time. Alright, and to render, you just click render. No sound, because it can't register sound. Whatever you want, save. And then it'll 
it'll take about five minutes to render it, depending on how long it is, really. And there you go. That's how you do lightsabers. Um, one more thing. On the newer, oh, here's a lightsaber class. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Anyway, there will be like some like that on the newer version of Effects Lab, and it you put it right at the base by the hilt where the hilt and the lightsaber meet, and when you ignite your lightsaber, go like gee, it'll make like a flash, like an optic glare, and yeah, just play around. You can do a lot with this program. It's worth every penny. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go now. You have fun. Um yeah.